Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here, making you another awesome math video. Uh, this video is on the exact solutions uh, of the quadratic equation uh, using the quadratic formula. So it's something that I'm doing in my class right now. And, um, you know, just before Christmas break, I thought uh, no student showed up today. So I thought I'd make a little math video, make some use of my time. Let's see if I can get this working now. All right, let's give it a shot. So, um, this is an example of something you might see. So solve finding the exact solutions of this equation. So the key word here is this, exact. So exact solution means that if we get a square root that's not a perfect square. So for example, root 5 is not a perfect square. Um, when you take it, you get a decimal. And you can't approximate it because it continues without no pattern. So that means that we have to basically leave that root and deal with it somehow. And sometimes it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, sometimes you might have to um, break something down. Let me try to erase this now. Sometimes you might have to break down a root. So for example, like root 50, which has a perfect square inside of it. We might have to break that down um, and so on. So we're going to do that today with quadratic formula and see how it goes. So uh, for just a refresher memory, quad form looks like this. So negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So if you don't remember that, I always tell my students, you know, chances are your teacher's probably going to give it to you. But if you don't remember it, you haven't done enough practice. So it's a fairly straightforward formula to use. You just got to be careful with this negative b. So the first thing we have to do is identify what a, b, and c is. So my a value, even though there's nothing written in front of the x squared, there's still something there. There's a 1. So a is 1. My b is this negative 2 in front of the x. And my c is negative 19. So of course, with quad form, our quadratic uh, equation needs to be in standard form. So if it doesn't look like this, you need to make it look like this. All right, so let's give this a shot. So the first thing we do is we just sub everything in. So where I see an A, I put A. Where I see a B, I put B. And where I see C, I put C. So my first step is to deal with this negative. Now, a lot of my students will just forget about the fact about this. Well, I shouldn't say a lot. Some of them. If they're going to make a mistake, there's chances are it's a good spot to make. So because, I don't know why I put B there. Uh, hang on now. Undo. Control Z. I'll do that next time. All right, so let me try that again. So negative 2. So a lot of my students will uh, take this step and just think about it. Well, it's negative and a negative. It's going to be positive anyway. So some of my students just might put plus 2 to begin with. But I'm putting that there just now to show you that this negative on the outside of B in quad form has to stay here. It has to be dealt with. So if you have a negative B already, it's just going to basically change the sign and make a positive. So plus minus and square root. So we need to make sure that when we have a negative b value that we put brackets here and we square it. And when we put it in our calculator to compute this, it has to look exactly like that. The squared has to be outside the brackets. If we don't do that, we're going to get a wrong answer. Your calculator is an idiot, so you got to make sure that you tell it to do exactly what you want it to do. So my a is 1, so I put my a is 1. My c is negative 19. And then I'll just divide that by 2 times 1. All right, so first step accomplished. Next step. What I always tell my students to do first is just calculate what's underneath the root first. So I'm just going to put that right in my calculator. So negative 2 squared. Uh, subtract 4 times 1 times negative 19. So I end up with 80. I'll also, in that next step, because it's negative, negative, I'll make that plus. So plus or minus, 2 plus or minus square root, 80, all divided by 2. So the next thing we do is we have to reduce this root 80. So there's a perfect square trapped inside of this root 80. Now, we take it out to the side. Now, if you're lucky enough to own a Casio, 
that has uh, ES written at the end of the number. So mine, for example, is a 991ES. Um, it could, you could put root 80 in it, and it could shoot back the answer right now. So you wouldn't even have to worry about actually doing this on a on a test because your calculator can do it for you. Now, I'm not advocating not knowing how to do it, but uh, if your goal is to get a good mark and be right 100% of the time, then uh, Casio can certainly help you with that. Uh, but, you know, I digress. We will go through the manual method. So the manual method is, this is how I would do it. I think of my list of perfect squares, and, you know, you can write them out to the side of your page. So all I'm doing is 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, and then 6 times 6, 36. So then I just start working backwards and seeing which one of these is going to divide this 80. Now you could keep going and add more to the list, but I know the number that works. It's already in the list. So I start and I start doing it and I go, well, 80 divided by 36, that's not going to work. 80 divided by 25, that's not going to work. 80 divided by 16 and you get pure magic, it's 5. All right. So what I do now is since one of my perfect squares work, I call this 16 times 5. So if you're reducing a root, and that's a 5, not an S. Uh, if you're reducing a root, it's always perfect square times not a perfect square. That's generally how it works. Now, 4 would also work, but 4 is not going to get us the fully reduced. We would have to do it again. So you want to start backwards, pick the bigger number, and that makes it work. All right, so next thing we do is we break this up into 16 times root 5. And then square root of 16 is 4. And then 5 we can't do. So we've reduced that root 80 into 4 root 5. Now, this is not necessarily a video on how to do that. I assume that if you're doing quad form, you've probably been taught that somewhere along the way. Um, so if you need some extra practice with it, just search on my channel, and maybe I'll put something in the description if I get a chance um, about uh, reducing roots. So I'll have a video that focuses solely on that. But that is a very important skill, especially if you're not allowed to use a calculator that does it for you, or if you just really want to know how to do it, which is the right answer. Uh, so now what we do is we replace that root 80, with that reduced root. So 4 root 5 divided by 2. So once I place this root 5 in my new, uh, new expression here, it's impenetrable. Okay, So that root 5 is not going to change. I'm not going to work it out as a decimal. I am not going to divide it in any way. The root 5 is now root 5 for eternity. Okay. And that's what exact means, is exact means that that root 5, it's exactly root 5. I know it. But if you put that in your calculator, you cannot say what exactly root 5 is as just a number. So, you know, you could get the decimal approximation for it, but that's not exact because it keeps going forever. So now the next thing we need to do is see if this thing reduces down. And what I tell my students to look for is the trifecta. So what I mean by that is these three numbers, the 2 here, the 2 here, the 2 here, and the 4 here, the number in front of the root we can touch. We cannot touch the root, the number in front only. So if those three numbers are divisible by the same number, doesn't necessarily have to be on the bottom, it could be any number, then yes, you can reduce. So I'm going to divide all these numbers, see if I can get a different color here. I'm going to divide all these numbers by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and then divide by 2. And then what that gets me, I'll write my final answer in red, is 1 plus or minus, because obviously 2 divided by 2 is 1. Don't forget to write that. A lot of people forget to write that. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then the root 5 is there forever. And then... Uh, divide 2 divided by 2 is 1, so you could write this all over 1 if you want to. I'm not going to, um, but it's not necessary, right? So you don't really need to. Um, so yeah, that's our answer. 1 plus or minus 2 root 5. So 1 plus root 5, that's my first exact solution. And then 1 minus root 5, all right? So those are real, and they are different solutions, real and different. So if your teacher is asking you for what's the nature of the roots, so the nature of the roots is that they're real, 
they're, they exist, they're actual numbers. We could plot them on a graph if we wanted to. And then um, they are different. So obviously they're, they got to subtract, one has a subtract, one has a plus. So they're gonna be different numbers. Um, so just don't forget what they actually are. They're X intercepts on the graph of the function of this guy. So yeah, that's how you do that guy. So I mean, uh, it's a it's a tricky process at first, but once you get going with it, they're prob they're all pretty much the same. Let's do another example and see if we can't uh, break it down again. All right, let's try this guy. So we got an A value here. That doesn't really change a whole lot. It's negative. I generally don't like that. Um, so one of the things that I usually do, if I get a negative A value, I usually um, I flip all the signs. So unless you're uber confident with this, I wouldn't recommend it. But you know, all, you, all I'm doing is to basically times in this thing by negative 1. And I can times it by anything I want to. Because it's equal to 0 on the right side, I can do whatever I want. So I'm flipping all the signs, and that way I don't end up with a negative in the denominator. So I don't want that. So start with my quad form. So this time, well, I should write down my A, B, and C. I don't want to get lazy. So my A is 3. My B is 2. My C is 4. Now, if you did use the first version right here, um, you certainly would get exactly the same answer. Just might have to do a little bit more manipulation because we we shouldn't be leaving negatives on the bottom. Um, so negative B, so negative 2. So this is one where the B is positive, so now it changes signs, plus or minus. Square root. So B squared, so 2 squared minus 4, and then A is 3. C is negative 4. All divided by 2 times A, which would be 3. So I just didn't want that negative to be there, so that's why I changed it. So now I'll do the same thing. I'll follow my own rules and do 2 squared. So what's underneath the root first? Minus 3, or times 3, sorry, times negative 4. So I get 52 underneath the root this time. So root 52, all divided by 6. So again, I'm going to um, try and break down this root 52. So you make your list of perfect squares, 1, 4, um, 9, 16, 25, and generally like the first 4 or 5 with low numbers like this, you can, again, uh, you can kind of guess that this is either going to be divisible by 4 or 16. If it ends in 2, an even number, then you're not going to, it's not going to, 25 is probably not going to work, right? So I'll try 4. One second, now someone's at my door. Hey guys, I'm back. Hopefully that didn't, uh, mess up too much and I hopefully my mic wasn't messed up the whole time because I just realized that perhaps it was um, we'll see all right so uh, we got to break down root 52 and as I said before I left um, that chances are that this let me go back to full screen Doo -doo -doo. Um, chances are that if you got something ends in an even number it's going to be divisible by 4 or 16 so I'll try 4 I know 16 is not going to work I know what the answer is so right now so 4 is the, the biggest number so I do 4, and then 52 divided by 4 is 13. So remember, perfect square, not a perfect square. So then this ends up as 2 root 13. So then I come over, I slap that guy right in place of that root 52. So that root 52 is gone, and then I replace it with 2 root 13, all divided by 6. And now... All I need to do is see if the trifecta is reducible. So it is, right? So 2, 2, and 6. 13, that's impenetrable. That's an impenetrable fortress. Cannot be touched. Um, so let's see. Uh, the 2, the 2, and the 6 are all divisible by 2. So I do negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Then 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I don't generally write that 1 in front of the root. I'll just leave it as root 13. And then got to divide the bottom 2. So that's divisible by th uh, 2, which makes it 3. Obviously not 2. Sloppy 2. I'm just going to put the divide by up here. Getting lazy, getting lazy. All right, so now we got our answer. So our solution is 1 plus root 13 divided by 2. So again, real and different. And then 1 minus root 13 divided by 3, not 2.
Um, yeah, there it is, guys. So hopefully this really helped you. Um, appreciate all the love, all the people who subscribed over the uh, quarantine. Um, you know, it, it, quarantine was a very busy time for me. So uh, not that I was working, but I, I have two kids, so um, they kept me occupied. And hopefully that some of these videos help you through that. And that's that's why you guys inspired me to uh, update my channel. And I love all the positive comments. And I try to be better, but um, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in class. Good luck studying.